Hey everybody, welcome back. Uh, this week's going to be kind of a quick one. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about slot canyons. Very important that you enunciate that. Um, today I want to talk about slot canyons, or in particular, uh, Antelope Canyon near Page, Arizona. Now this is a really cool place that you've definitely seen photos of. Um, anytime you've seen beautiful sculpted sandstone walls that are you know just ablaze in colors, beams of light shining down from above, uh, it's just an extraordinary place. But it also presents some photographic challenges. Now, I took a tour of Antelope Canyon a few years back. Now, on this particular tour, um, we weren't allowed to bring tripods, and that presents some difficulties because slot canyons tend to be pretty dark. So I had to shoot with higher ISOs in order to make up for how dark it was in order to get fast enough shutter speeds. Now, as a result, some of the images tended to be a little bit noisier, but today's cameras do a pretty good job shooting at high ISOs, so that wasn't really too much of a difficulty. The other difficulty that can manifest is uh, there's a great deal of dynamic range, or the difference between bright and dark in an image. Um, in slot canyons, you're in a very shadowy, dark region, and you have extremely bright blue skies sometimes, the light that can be shining down can be very bright. So in order to capture all of those tones, sometimes we have to resort to different photographic techniques like HDR, um, bracketing exposures, that sort of thing. So um, I'm gonna go over a couple images I took on this particular trip. I'll show you how to blend exposures using HDR in Lightroom. And I'll also show you how to bring out the inherent colors that are in uh, images in slot canyons that might not make themselves known in the raw file. It'll be a real quick one, we're gonna go through it and uh, I'll see you on the other side. Okay, let's take a look at this image here. This is a pretty cool scene uh, that reminded me a lot of the Paramount logo at the beginning of Raiders of the Lost Ark in particular. Uh, so I'm all here for it. Um, anyway, uh, first thing I do with most images is go to the lens corrections, remove chromatic aberration. I don't have the enable profile corrections available to me with this image because I converted the raw file to a DNG. Um, that is a topic for another video, but that's why that's, that's not really available to me. Anyway, the next thing I'm going to do is change my color profile. And I'm going to select Adobe Landscape. And that punches up the colors and contrast a little bit without crushing the shadows. It's a good starting point. The next thing I'm going to do is adjust the color temperature because it's a little warm, warmer than it was when I was there. And I'm going to bring back some more of the blue and purple that was in the scene because there's a big blue sky above um, and some of that, that blue light should be reflecting off the sandstone here. The next thing I'll do is it's a pretty low contrast image and it's kind of dim. So I'm going to increase the exposure. Maybe not quite there, perfect. And I'm gonna add a little bit of an S curve into this tone curve uh, panel to increase the contrast. So I'm gonna create a point in the lower portion of the tones, the darker tones. Drag that down a little bit and I'm going to create a point in the upper, upper tones here and increase that a little bit. And this standard S curve gives us a nice amount of contrast. Dial that up just a little bit more. Excellent. And as you can see, the colors are really popping in this image just by adjusting the exposure and adjusting the contrast. We didn't do anything with saturation. In fact, I'm gonna bring down the saturation just a little bit. So it's not so uh, neon. Next thing I'll do is increase the white slider a little bit just to brighten some of the lighter tones in the image. Wonderful. And then I'm gonna add a very slight vignette to the corners by dragging the slider down just a little bit in the effects panel. And really, that's all I wanna do with this image. Um, what I will do uh, later is zoom into some of these little specks on the wall. They're a little distracting to me and clone those out um, but that's not really entirely necessary. So let's look at the image by itself, the raw file right out of the camera. And after just a couple of minutes of uh, processing to bring out the vibrancy that was there, and I would be happy to put this in front of the next Indiana Jones movie 
If anyone's out there, I'm ready for it. So one of the greatest difficulties in photographing slot canyons like uh, Antelope Canyon is there the, the great deal of dynamic range, the difference between the brightest areas and the darkest areas in an image. You know, especially when you're shooting in there on a bright sunny day with a bright blue sky and uh, you're down in these really uh, dark shadowed regions taking the photos. So while in an image like this, we have a good deal of detail here in the shadows, the sky is completely blown out. And even if I were to take this exposure slider and drag it all the way down, even in this raw file, there's just no detail there. It's just pure white. So uh, what we do with images like these is HDR or high dynamic range imagery. That's taking uh, a bracketed series of exposures some at the proper exposure as the camera would meter it, some at the darker at a, a, a stop or two lower and then a stop or two brighter. And we combine these images to kind of get the best of all worlds. So that's kind of what I did. Now I didn't have a tripod or couldn't use a tripod um, on this tour, so I had to do these handheld. So there's a slight misalignment from frame to frame, but we can deal with that pretty easily in Lightroom. So I took these three shots, you see this sort of uh, brightest exposure has a sky overblown, the darkest exposure captures the sky, but the foreground is completely crushed as far as the shadows are concerned, and then exposure somewhere in between. So I'm going to combine these three photos. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is select this brighter exposure so I can see what I'm working with a little bit. I'm going to go, oops, I'm going to go down to Lens Corrections, Remove Chromatic Aberration, and that's going to remove uh, purple fringing, uh, purple and green fringing that happens when you zoom into the image uh, between a bright area and a dark area like this. If I uncheck it, you could see it comes out way more pronounced. And then when I check it to remove chromatic aberration, it removes that to a great extent. I can go a little further with that if I want by going to the Manual Lens Corrections, selecting this eyedropper tool, and selecting that purple, uh, some purple pixels that have still not been captured by that first correction. So select one of those and it kind of gets rid of most of that effect. Wonderful. And I'm going to zoom back out to 100%. I'm going to make a slight um, white balance adjustment just to cool it off a little bit to bring back some of the bluer tones in the shadow regions. And I'm going to go to this profile, color profile here, and I'm going to select Adobe Landscape. And that's going to give us a little more contrast and a little bit punchier color. And I'm going to close that. Now I've made these corrections to this one image and I want to carry them across to the other images. So down in my timeline here, or my uh, little film strip here at the bottom, I have my brightest exposure. I'm going to shift click on my darkest exposure so that all three images are selected. I'm going to, in the lower right hand corner, click sync. I'm going to check all of the adjustments and synchronize. So that's going to carry all of those adjustments across to all three exposures. The next thing I'm going to do is select again all three of these exposures by selecting the first exposure in the series and then shift click on the last exposure in the series. I'm then going to right click, go to photo merge and then HDR. That's going to combine all three images, align them because they were taken uh, just a, a couple of moments apart and I didn't have a tripod, so I want to make sure that I have auto align checked right here. Now there's a few different options here. If there are moving objects in your image like people or animals or water, um, you can use this de-ghost tool to help to correct that but I'm going to leave that alone for now. You can select auto settings and what it does is, is that creates what Lightroom thinks is the best combination of the three images. I don't want to do that because I want to take control over what it's doing to these images. So I'm going to leave that unchecked. So it's auto align checked and I'm going to click on merge and we'll let it do its thing. Awesome. So now it's created a new stacked uh, image 
that has all three exposures combined into one, and it's uh, amended the title with HDR. So this looks still pretty blown out, but that's because the detail's there and we need to bring it back. So I'm going to the basic panel here. I'm gonna bring down the highlights. Now, as you can already see, I've captured that blue sky and the detail is still there in the image. So I'm gonna bring that down a little bit there. I'm gonna bring up the shadows to help bring back some of the detail in the foreground in the shadow areas. And just kind of, kind of finesse this until I get what I want. I'm gonna take the white balance and draw it down just a little more just to bring back more of that blue and purple in the foreground. Next, I'm going to use the tone curve and bring up the mid-tones of the image. And then next, I'm gonna bring down the highlights even more. Wonderful. And the shadows up a little more as well. I could bring up the whites a little as well, just to increase the contrast and brighten the brighter tones in the image. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of a, of a vignette to the corners. And if I want to adjust uh, just some of the, the sky region here, I can go to luminance in the HSL panel and I can mess with this uh, blue slider to give myself a deeper bluer sky. Don't really wanna mess with that too much. If you go too low, it kind of uh, looks unrealistic. So I'm just gonna bring it down a little bit. Excellent. And just a slight negative adjustment to clarity to just soften some of the harsh edges in the image. And then maybe a slight bump up in exposure. All right. And there we have it. Let's look at the image by itself. And as you can see, we still have the beautiful blue sky that was uh, um, casting all this amazing light in this image, but we've also captured the deep shadowy regions without making it look too unrealistic or overprocessed, in my opinion. Thank you so much for joining me on my exploration of uh, Antelope Canyon. I hope you got something out of this that you can use the next time you, you head out to one of those beautiful slot canyons. If you like this video, please remember to like, subscribe, check me out on Instagram at Matthew Arrington Photo, or go to my website at MatthewArrington.com. Thanks again, and I'll see you next week.